Creating these classes requires equipment and services that cost money. If you appreciate this education, please think about going to elithecomputerguy.com and offering a one-time or monthly recurring donation. Welcome back. As you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and in today's class, I'm going to be showing you how to sanitize your variables when you're sending uh, data from your PHP scripts to your MySQL database tables. So again, we are going to be using an HTML form. That HTML form is going to be handing off uh, the variable values to a PHP script. That PHP script is going to then parse the values, turn them into PHP variables, plug that into a, a SQL statement and ship that off to the MySQL database server to insert a data, insert records into that MySQL database table. Now it's important to understand whenever you're dealing with security in the computer realm is that you're, you're going to have to deal with security from multiple fronts. Too many times when people think about security, again, when it comes to technology, they have this idea of like one product or one solution secures your system which is just foolish. Again, if you're dealing with a computer or dealing with a server, you do not simply install antivirus and your system is secure. One thing does not secure the system. You have to have antivirus. If it's a client computer, you probably want some anti-spam or anti-malware, anti-spyware software on there. You need to have the firewall on. You need to have the account policies uh, set up properly. Plus, you just need a backup system in case something stupid happens, right? You have multiple ways to secure either your client system or your server system. Now, you don't just use one product. Uh, the same is true whenever you're dealing with things like uh, MySQL database servers. Again, a lot of people hyper-focus on one specific attack in order to secure their server, and then they ignore the other ways that their systems can be attacked. And of course, at the end of the day, when something happens, they always say, oh, I did what I was supposed to do. It's not my problem, right? But anyways, uh, so the, one of the things we did in the last class is we did something called a prepared statement. So a prepared statement tries to prevent what are called uh, SQL injection attacks. So the idea with a SQL injection attack is that you try to escape out of the statement that PHP is sending to your MySQL server and then essentially add your own SQL statement. So there's a, nor there's a statement that's supposed to be sent. You try to do something to escape out of that statement, add your own statement, and then you hope that the MySQL database server then reads your statement and actually executes that. So this could be something uh, such as uh, deleting a table. This could be something like adding a record to a table, or this could be something such as backing up the tables or database uh, to an off-site location. I'm doing an off-site backup. I'm just, you know, off-siting it to some place these people don't know exists. That's all I'm doing, right? Um, but one of the things you have to think about with injection attacks is beyond an injection attack, again, where you're doing something like a SQL injection in order to try to manipulate the, uh, the server, is that you can have your... Um, your users also try to insert things such as tags or such as other types of code that will be triggered in different ways. Uh, so one of the things that I'm going to show you today is basically where uh, we're going to use the same form we've used like 10 times now, where it's a name, it's a, it's a name, it's an age, it's a gender, and then that goes into the students table. Well, one of the things that I'm going to show you how to do is instead of typing out a normal name, such as Bob or whatever else, what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to type in a hyperlink with Bob as the name. So I'm going to uh, type out the, the entire a href tag, plug that into the normal HTML form, that will then get plugged into the MySQL uh, database servers uh, table. And then when we do a select statement, basically we print that out onto our web browser screen, you will see that there's one particular record where the name is that will actually now be a hyperlink that you can click on it, right? Um, and so this is one of the problems you can run into. And this is where you have to think about security from all aspects of your system. So if you have users that are going to your site and somebody does something such as plug in a... Uh, Oh, a, a hyperlink where simply a name should be, you then may have your users clicking on that hyperlink that goes to a spam site or virus site or something like that, and then you start causing all kinds of problems. So what we're going to do today is we're going to be then sanitizing what is called sanitizing that variable. So we're going to use a, a function called filter underscore var. So what this function does is it actually sanitizes variables. So you do a filter underscore var, you do parentheses, you then give the variable uh, that you want to sanitize, 
you then do comma, and then you give it what filter you want to, to basically filter, sanitize that variable based on. So they have a uh, filter for strings, they have a filter for emails, uh, they actually have like 20 different filters. And again, this is one of those things to be thinking about. It's not like you just do one filter against all variables. It depends on what, what type of variable you're supposed to be using. So if it's supposed to be an email address that somebody is submitting, then you can do the filter underscore var, dollar sign email, whatever it is, comma, and then whatever the filter is for the email address. And then basically what it'll do is, what the filter will do is it'll rip out everything uh, that isn't supposed to be in an email address. What I'll show you today using the string filter is basically, um, again, I will, I will plug in that href into the form. We'll actually see how that works as an attack. But then after that, I will add this filter uh, to our normal PHP code. And what'll happen is that this filter will go through and it'll actually rip out all the HTML tags uh, and we'll simply leave the text that is supposed to be here. So this is what we're talking about when we're talking about sanitizing variables. And that's why it's important when you're dealing with, again, HTML forms, PHP, inserting or updating into MySQL database tables. There's no real warning warning for today. It's more, this is the type of thing that you are going to have to play with. I know, I know. Oh, Eli, what? You mean a tech professional is supposed to play and experiment and see what happens? Oh, shocking. I, I can't believe the advice you give sometimes, Eli. Uh, but that's really the case. Again, when you're going through and you're trying to sanitize the variables uh, with the particular function that I'm showing you today, filter underscore var, there are many different filters. So what I would suggest is you just, you create some really nasty variables and then you, you play and you echo out and see what the results are when you send that nasty variable through these different filters and you figure out what result works best for you. I will also say again, when you're talking about doing things such as sanitizing uh, your variables. There are other functions you can use to sanitize variables. How you do uh, the sanitization of your variables really depends on what results you need and you expect. Um, Again, and that's that's one of those things you can run into, or it's not it's not that there's one way to solve any problem. It is for your specific situation, you figure it out. Again, do make sure you play with this on test systems. Sanitizing variables actually does change the freaking variable. <laughs> so if you do it on a production system, it you're not really sure what you're doing, uh, you could hose something up really quickly. Uh, but that's really all the warning is today, is, is go play with this, see, see what actually happens, see if the results are acceptable, try a lot of different experimentations, see what happens, um, and then yeah, go from there. So with that, let's go over to the computer and I'll show you how this works. So here we are back in my lab environment. Again, I'm using Ubuntu Desktop 18.04 LTS, but realistically, any version of Ubuntu Desktop should work fine for you. I have this running in a virtual machine and virtual box, and of course, this is running on my MacBook Pro. In order to create the full LAMP stack here, I used a tool called Task Cell, uh, T-A-S-K-S-E-L, that, that installed the Apache, MySQL, and PHP. I have not modified any of the default configurations, php.ini, vhost, all that type of thing are standard out of the box. The only modification that I have done is I did create a PHP folder within the Apache root directory just as a place to dump these particular PHP scripts and keep it all nice and clean. So that's the environment that we're going to be dealing with today. Um, so the first thing that we need to do, of course, is we know, need to go and we need to take a look at our MySQL database, make sure we know what's going on with our MySQL database. Uh, so we type in terminal, uh, terminal up in the search box. To get to the command prompt from here, we go into MySQL, space hyphen U, uh, Bob, space hyphen P for a password, uh, enter password, one, two, three, four, five, six. Of course, we're using the same database we've been using for all of these, uh, these projects. We're gonna be using class uh, DB. So we do use class uh, DB. Uh, semicolon, we go into class DB. Uh, then we go to show tables, to make sure we know what tables we're dealing with. 
uh, we can see here and basically the table that we're going to be dealing with is the students table of course we do desc to describe the students table just to make sure we know what's going on with the students table semicolon this will show us a students table has a student underscore id that is an integer that's a primary key and that's an auto increment basically that's just an id for all the different students we have name is text age is integer gender is text and we have a uniform field we're not dealing with today that is also text if we do uh, select all from students just to see what the records look like semicolon uh, we can go and we can see and basically we've just got the standard kind of crappy data that we should expect here right so we have a student id number 23 24 all the way up to 38 we have a name bob susan patsy tom we have ages we have genders and then here we have null for the uniform so this is this is what the data in this particular table should look like so let's go over take a look at the form so this is just mozilla uh firefox this is up um, we've just going going to the form.html. So this is the HTML form we're using to submit data to the script. And then that script will input data uh, into this particular table. So if we go here, oh, we can just say, uh, let's say Freddie for a name. We can do an age of 32 and we can make uh, Freddie be a boy. We do a submit query. So added Freddie 32 boy. Um, I have created a little PHP script that will actually print out a select statement to the screen. So if I do a refresh and go here, again, we see the same information that we see in the MySQL database table. And so we can see for record 39, we have Freddie uh, and we have uh, that hit there a boy. Uh, if we go back here, again, select all from students, uh, we can see Freddie 32 boy. So basically we can see all of this information is getting inputted. We can pull this out. Again, this is like a web form. This is a report form, uh, or we can go back into the MySQL database uh, server, actually do a select all for the table and see all the information there. So let's see what this kind of uh, insertion attack looks like and what we're trying to prevent. So if we go over uh, to gedit. Um, I can open this up and basically just to make my life easier, I have created uh, this hyperlink uh, for the name Bob. And so what we can see here is a ref equals double quotation mark HTTP w, uh, forward slash all that www.cnn.com close. Then it will show Bob and then it will cl uh, close the hyperlink. And so what I can do is I can simply do uh, control C. So basically I can copy this. I can come over back to the same form that I was using before, and I can just copy and uh, paste this in. Uh, whoops, ah, copy and paste this in, there we go. So I copy and paste that in, uh, let's change the, the age here to 11, and let's change this to a girl, and then we can submit a query. And so the first problem that you're going to see here is now we can see added, we can see 11, we can see girl, but if we put our, uh, put our little cursor over this, we can now see that this is actually a link. If we go over here, again, this is just uh, printing out the select statement to the screen. If I do a refresh, what I can now see is that for record 40, Bob is a girl, but Bob is now a hyperlink. See how none of these are hyperlinks? This is a hyperlink, and if I click on this, then it will send somebody over to CNN.com. No! You're sending them to fake news. That's so horrible. But like I say, this actually is an assertion and this actually works. And so imagine imagine if you have people uh, inserting their names, again, into something like a forum, into some, some kind of uh, system where other people are going to be looking at it. If there is a hyperlink over their name or over some other object, you're going to get a certain number of people clicking that hyperlink. And again, if it's a corporate environment, that may be going to virus, spyware, hacking tools, all kinds of problems. So the way that we deal with this is that we use uh, the, the, uh, the function called filter underscore var, right? So we go over here and we take a look at the PHP form as it stands now. So this is the form.html. So the form.html is this form here right and so as you can see it's a normal form so form action equals php form dot php so the information that's gathered from this form will be sent to the php form dot php we have a name is a text name is name 
age is a text, name is age, gender is gender, and then you get either nothing, you get boy or girl. And so this all gets tossed over to the PHP form.php. From here, what happens is you get the post name, right, is turned into the PHP variable dollar sign name. The post age is turned into the uh, PHP variable uh, dollar sign age, and the post gender is turned into the variable uh, dollar sign gender. Again, so this name, age, and gender, just to refresh, comes from name, age, and gender. So whatever you name these fields here, that's where you grab from the post. Then past that, again, we have no security in here. We have no sanitization. So we connect to the server like we normally do. We create the actual connection like we normally do. If there's a problem with the connection, we fail like we normally do. And then simply from here, we have a SQL statement that says inter insert into students name, age, gender. And then you have values, name, age, and gender, right? So basically, if it's text in your MySQL database and you submit text, then it's simply going to be inserted. If that text is just a name or if that text is a full hyperlink or who the hell knows what else, uh, it will just get inserted. Again, you can have JavaScript get inserted. You can have all kinds of stuff get inserted, right? Um, and then from here, basically connection query, uh, if this is actually true, if the uh, if the SQL statement actually runs, the data, the, the record is created, then it simply prints out what was added. So the name, the age, and the gender. If not, it errors and the connection closes. So basically what you can see here is this literally just takes whatever the hell uh, comes in from the HTML form. So if it's text, it just grabs that text, turns it into a variable, and then it inserts it into the MySQL database and nobody asks any questions. So what we want to do is we want to grab this little uh, thing here. So we're going to do control C. We're going to go back to the PHP form and we are going to add this here to then sanitize our variable. Uh, so here we have dollar sign name. So dollar sign name equals uh, whatever comes in from the post named name. So what we're going to do here is we are just going to then say that the value of name, we're going to give it a new value. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this function. So filter underscore var. And then what we're going to do is dollar sign name. So basically dollar sign name as it is, will get put into this function. And then we do comma, and then we add the filter, filter underscore sanitize string. So this is the particular filter that we are going to be using. Again, there are lots of different filters out there for this particular function. If we go down here and we just take a look at Safari, you go to the PHP uh, manual for filters. Uh, you have this sanitize filters and you can see that there are a lot of different filters here. So filter underscore sanitize for email, sanitize for encoded, for quotes, for number float, for an integers, for special characters, uh, for the string. So that's what we're going to be doing. Sanitize strip, sanitize for a URL. Uh, so there are a lot of these different filters. And basically what you do is you just sanitize based off of what you're looking for. So if you want to make sure that only an email will go in, you can filter based off of an email. Again, what we're doing today, if you want to filter for just a string, again, what this does is strips tags, uh, optionally strip uh, or encode special Special characters and this is one of those again like I say that you've got to like play around with and see what works best for you anyways let's go back and so name equals uh, filter var uh, open parentheses we then just feed uh, the original variable so this is what's going to come in we're then going to sanitize the screen stream uh, yeah the string we're then going to close the parentheses and then of course it's PHP so we're going to do the semicolon we are now going to do save we can then, now that it's saved, we can then go back. Uh, let's say here, what we're going to do is we're just going to put Tim. So we see that this is a different record. We will change Tim to 22. We'll change Tim to a boy. We will now submit. So now you can see Tim here that the HTML, that hyperlink has been stripped out. Now all we see is the normal name Tim. If we go to this uh, little select report that I created before, again, we see, can see that Bob was a hyperlink. If I do a refresh, we can see the new record is created and it simply has the name Tim um, and there's no hyperlink there. If we then go to our MySQL database uh, and actually take a look at the table, make sure nothing stupid was put into the table. Again, select all from students. 
Hit hit enter, and again, we can see that Tim was only added. So all this a ref here that you have for Bob, that was all ripped out. All that was left is the name, the text string that you actually wanted, so on and so forth. And this is what you can see is without that sanitization, you can see that the entire, that entire HTML tag that whole thing went to uh, the database and actually got inserted uh, so that's what we're talking about when we're talking about sanitizing strings and again this is using the filter underscore var function there are other ways to sanitize strings uh, but especially when you're playing around and you're new this uh, filter underscore var function i think is very useful because again it has a lot of different filters that you can use some things that you can play around with um, so if nothing else this is a good place to start so there you go. Now you know how to sanitize variables using the filter underscore var function. Again, there are other functions out there. There are other ways you can sanitize variables. How you sanitize and what you need to do really depends upon your particular situation. Again, it is important to understand whenever you're dealing with something like a MySQL server is that there are multiple vectors for attack. There's multiple different ways to try to compromise a system. Some ways it's a SQL injection attack where you're literally trying to compromise the, the SQL server and get the SQL server to do something like back up to an off-site uh, location. Uh, other ways is again, you, you know, you think about if you're going to be building some kind of like public CRM solution. So you're going to be uh, building a new WordPress or you're going to be building a new Drupal or something like that. Uh, being able to filter out people's ability uh, to create hyperlinks and things like the name box or whatever can be a very valuable thing. Uh, this was a big issue that I saw like 10 years ago when when forums were really big right when social media was completely new and everybody was trying to become the next Facebook you saw a lot of pu uh, public forums get deployed uh, frankly using some some pretty crappy uh, code uh, to get things accomplished and one of the issues that you saw is that literally people were inserting they were inserting not just HTML but they were inserting JavaScript basically they were inserting all kinds of crap into the fields uh, that would actually get recorded uh, in the MySQL database tables. And then whenever somebody printed out a screen, did a report, and that those tags, those scripts were called, those scripts would then run, and then you would get viruses, and then you get malware, and then you get pop-ups, and you get all kinds of nasty stuff. And this is one of those things to be thinking about. Did, did the hacker really compromise the MySQL server? No, the, the MySQL server itself is still secure. <laughs> It's your users that are getting compromised, right? And this is where you have to think about those different attack vectors um, and then figure out how you're going to try to solve for it. Uh, again, this is also why it's very important if you're going to be creating things like web applications that, again, are going to be public facing, that are going to be internet facing. This is why it's very important to do a lot of testing Find one of your find one of your friends that's like the biggest a hole. You know those wannabe hackers out there. You know those wannabe hackers. Like find your friend that wants to be a wannabe hacker and sit them down in front of your app and see see what they can actually accomplish. Again, many times you sit there and you know your your app will have ten different possible vulnerabilities. You'll you'll lock down nine of them and you just didn't realize something like somebody could literally insert something like a JavaScript uh, straight into your MySQL database table, um, and then that will fire every time somebody goes and that that's actually pulled. Uh, so these are some of the things to think about. And again, that's why it's important to sit down, get multiple different friends, get multiple different people to actually hammer the hell out of your web application. You may be surprised what vulnerability is there that, again, you, you just weren't thinking about. Your, 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 your server is secure. <laughs> My server is secure. Again, that's how it goes. So anyways, uh, as always, I enjoyed doing this, uh, this class. I look forward to seeing you at the next one. Apparently, the type of content you just saw is not what Susan W. wants for the future of YouTube. This means that recommendations by YouTube to this channel have dropped massively and views are becoming comically small. I hate to ask. I used to say I would never ask. But if you could subscribe, like, comment, and most importantly, share the videos that you appreciate, that may help slow the death of this channel. Do remember that if anything at all happens to this channel, you can go to elithecomputerguy.com to view the content and access information not available on YouTube.